Welcome physics folk. In today's video, we'll be looking at the photoelectric effect, one particular investigation, and that is investigating the effect of the incident light intensity upon the photo current. So let's look at our conditions. First of all, for this investigation, we'll be using a dependent variable of the photo current, an independent variable, the one we're going to change, of the incident light intensity. Some of the controlled variables we have are the wavelength of light, the cathode metal, and the anode voltage. And finally, the aim of our investigation is to investigate what effect, if any, the incident light intensity has upon the generated photocurrent. So let's have a look at the method for this investigation. First step. We're using the FET photoelectric effect simulator, so there's our link. You'll need to access that particular simulator to carry this investigation out. Step two, we want to select the sodium cathode. Step three, set light intensity to 100%. Step four, set the wavelength to 240 nanometers. Step five, select graph option one, that is the current versus battery voltage. Step six, move the anode voltage slider from full left to right. Step seven, take a picture of the graph generated with the picture tool. Step eight, repeat steps one to seven for light intensities of 80, 60, 40, and 20% respectively. So at this point, let's have a look at how this works on the FET photoelectric effect simulator. We've opened up the FET photoelectric simulator. We're now going to make certain we've selected the correct cathode. We've got a list of metals here. We were looking for the sodium cathode. We were going to set the light intensity to 100%. Let's move that across to 100%. You can also, by the way, change that to array of photons if you prefer. We now wish to step four, set the wavelength to 240 nanometers. 240 nanometers is in the ultraviolet region. We're going to select graph option one, the current versus battery graph. And we're going to move our anode slider from left to right and back again. Let's adjust this so that our graph can be seen clearly. There we go, there's our graph. And you can see as we move our slider, it plots for us. Nicely done. Now we'd like to take a picture of that particular graph. And following the method description for step eight, we now want to repeat this for 80, 60, 40, and 20% light intensity. So we'd reduce this down to an 80% light intensity. We will repeat this, move it back and forth and we take another picture. Do the same for 60, move it back and forth again, take a picture, same for 40%, slide our anode voltage across, and finally 20%. Slide our voltage across, and take a picture. Let's now analyze our results. Here's a set of results achieved using the FET simulator. And you can see here's our original graph with 100% light intensity. We've reduced it to 80%. We can see it's changed slightly. Intensity to 60, it's dropped. To 40, it's dropped again. And 20, it's dropped again. So here's our five different graphs showing the photocurrent versus the battery voltage. Let's look at a summary. So here's all five incident light intensities against the anode voltage. So my question too is what similarities exist in each plot? Have a think, pause if you like. First of all, all plots have a gradient of zero when the anode voltage is positive. So there might be different photocurrents in each case, but their gradient's the same, they're constant within that positive anode voltage. All plots reduced to zero when the anode voltage is negative. Okay, so they'll start at different points, but they'll end up at a photocurrent of zero. And we notice that the x-intercept is identical for all the plots. That's three similarities. What differences exist in each plot? So if we look at the plots we have here for the different intensities, what's something that changes? Have a think, pause the video if you like. The main difference is that the photocurrent reduces as does the intensity. So it starts up here at a value of 100% at the top of our graph. Then as it reduces to 80% light intensity, the photocurrent drops down. 60% intensity, it drops again further reducing to 40% and then down to 20. So the photo current reduces as does the incident light intensity. So let's look at what conclusions can be drawn from this first investigation of the photoelectric effect. We found the photo current is proportional to the incident light intensity. And we write this as I photo is proportional to the light intensity. If we increase our light intensity, we increase the photo current. If we decrease our light intensity, we decrease the photo current. And also the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is not proportional to the incident light intensity. 
and we can write that symbolically as EK is not proportional to light intensity. Now, EK, the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons, is measured by the stopping voltage Vs. So we can see here, here's our stopping voltage. It's our x-intercept. So regardless of the intensity of the light, all photoelectrons have a stopping voltage at the same point here, approximately minus 3 volts on this particular graph. Thank you for watching this video. If you've learned something about the photoelectric effect, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.